I am Dr. Shobha Menon. I am a gynecologist. Uh, today we will be discussing a very important topic as far as female cell concerned that is ovarian cyst and ovarian tumors. I will be sharing with you a brief knowledge about the ovarian cyst which is very very commonly seen 70 percent of the females all over the world and uh, we will be briefing on what are the types of ovarian cyst and what are the causes and how do you diagnose and how do you manage and prevent such an important uh, disease of the female organs. And before that, let me tell you what are ovaries. Ovaries are a very important reproductive endocrine organ in the female, which is located in the lower abdomen on both sides of the uterus. And what are the functions of the ovaries? We take a major role in providing the female sex hormones like estrogen, which initiates the menstrual period and the puberty associated with the breast development, hair distribution, fat de uh, deposition of the female. And along with the progesterone hormone, it uh, helps in ovulation and uh, maintaining the pregnancy. Now coming back to our topic today, ovarian cyst. There are so many different types of ovarian cyst and it varies from size, a pea size to a grapefruit size and most of the time it is harmless. But it is of importance if it is more than 5 cm, it can create a lot of problems like shock and hemorrhage, many, many, many consequences. And what are types of ovarian cysts? Most of the time it is physiological, like functional ovarian cysts, which is very harmless, asymptomatic, it doesn't cause any symptoms, and it is less than 5 cm. And it resolves within a period of 8 weeks to 12 weeks. So you don't need any active intervention for physiological or functional ovarian cyst. The next mo uh, most common cause is polycystic ovary syndrome. Polycystic ovary syndrome, the real cause is not known. There is genetic predisposition. And the main problem is excessive uh, secretion of male hormone in the female, which obviously contributes to all the symptoms which we see in the polycystic ovary, like baldness, hirsutism, excessive distribution of hair, obesity, thinning of the hair. But the most important three criteria for diagnosing, diagnosing a polycystic ovary syndrome, which is very commonly seen in the females at this century, is oligomenorrhea, irregular periods. Usually, polycystic ovary syndrome patients, they don't get more than nine cycles in a year. And like, as I said before, the male hormones like testosterone level is high in the female and by ultrasound seeing multiple tiny follicles in the subcortical area of the ovaries which, which are all the diagnostic criteria for diagnosing a polycystic ovary syndrome. Even though they are all tiny cysts occurring in the ovaries but on the long term it causes metabolic disorders leading to diabetes hypertension, high level of cholesterol, serum lipids, etc, etc. One of the main reasons for polycystic ovary leading to diabetes is insulin insensitivity or I would say resistance to insulin which causes diabetes in the later period of time. And how do you manage polycystic ovary syndrome? Even though the diagnostic criteria itself is ultrasound and you do the hormonal test, 
you ask for FSH, LH, serum testosterone, all these hormones help you to diagnose polycystic ovary syndrome. As far as the management is concerned, completing the family as early as possible is very important without any delay because it disrupts the release of the ovaries, I would say ovulation. One of the treatment modality is oral contraceptive which prevents ovulation thereby the symptoms are reduced and the male hormone is also reduced and the second treatment recommended in most of the textbook is definitely a major role for weight reduction if you reduce 5 kilo from your weight because this is usually associated with obesity and your medical treatment, surgical treatment, all this can be avoided. And how do you lose weight? By exercising, doing yoga, etc, etc and concentrate on the diet part of it. Avoid unsaturated fats in the food like cheese, meat, etc. Fried items. So losing weight is very, very important in polycystic ovary syndrome and it is recommended metformin which is an anti-diabetic agent which increases the insulin sensitivity and thereby it the regular periods are re-established because one of the main concern for patients coming to the doctor for polycystic ovary syndrome is irregular periods and infertility obviously because the ovum is not released if you are planning to get a baby soon, instead of oral contraceptive, GnRH analog hormone is also a very highly recommended treatment at the time being. And the third type of ovarian cyst which we commonly see in the females around the world is endometriosis. Endometriosis again it has got a, the real uh, cause is not known for endometriosis. But the textbook says it is the uterine endometrial lining which is deposited in other part of the uh, body like ovaries, very common, fallopian tube, peritoneum, etc. Just because of this endometrium uterine lining is deposited in the ovaries, monthly periods are very painful for patients are concerned because of the bleeding during the monthly period endometriosis again it is a high concern in the reproductive age group because it causes infertility and which is unexplained you know when you look for all other causes then you incidentally you find out by investigation so this is due to endometriosis painful period like dysmenorrhea just prior to the period during the period after the period these are all very major symptoms in uh, endometriotic patient lower abdominal pain heaviness bloated feeling always low backache lower abdominal pain these are all the major symptoms of endometriosis which patient come to the doctor and how do you manage endometriosis? Usually endometriosis is managed purely by uh, analgesic and spasmodic, especially NSAID group of analgesics. And uh, laparoscopy is recommended, which, is, which can be either diagnostic or curative, and open laparotomy depending on the stage of endometriosis. But again, I would recommend strongly for people who are in that uh, reproductive age group a patient with endometriosis to complete their reproductive age reproductive function as far as possible complete the childbearing whatever you are planning two baby one baby or three baby as early as possible without much delay because it can lead to the tubal block and infertility which is very, 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 very painful for the couples are concerned. 
there are other uh, cysts like dermoid cyst which is very commonly seen in pregnancy which has got all the elements which you see in the body by ultrasound if you look at the dermoid cyst you will see hair nail teeth calcification etc etc why all these cysts are important in the sense because of the future consequence of leading to ovarian cancer which is a very 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 common cancer as far as the female are concerned less than 5 cm cyst we don't need to worry more than 5 cm it is important just because it can cause rupture of the uh, cyst at any time which can lead to severe bleeding shock and it is an acute emergency due to torsion of the twist of the ovary then it is a very painful condition and what are the risk factors for developing an ovarian cancer early menarche late menopause genetic family history of cancer in the family like breast or colon and smoking these are all high risk for developing cancer in the future so how do you diagnose generally you can diagnose ovarian cyst by per abdomen examination or you would say per vaginal examination the next modality of investigation is ultrasound 90% of the time ultrasound tells you which category of the ovarian cyst it belongs to and the next modality of investigation comes ct scan mri and when it comes to the blood test blood test for hormones like fsh lh estrogen progesterone and male hormone testosterone and a predictive tumor marker like ca which is very ca125 these are all the tumor markers which gives you little clue even though it is not very specific for uh, future development of cancer so these are all the usual blood tests we recommend for the patients when they come to you with an ovarian cyst and management depends on the cause of the cyst like if they are symptomatic asymptomatic like functional you don't do anything just ask them to come for follow up scan and you will see within 8 uh, weeks 12 weeks it would have disappeared so it doesn't need any intervention but more than 5 cm definitely it needs intervention intervention surgically either by laparoscopy or open laparotomy open laparotomy will be a bigger incision depending on the uh, the risk of the patient you need more active intervention like you know very frequent follow ups especially when there is a family history of any malignancy cancer in the family you need to see the patient periodically and an active management is recommended like postmenopausal or perimenopausal after the age of 50 if you see a cyst even though it is less 4 cm 5 cm you don't just leave it like younger re reproductive age group but fortunately most of the cysts are seen in the reproductive age group between 20 and 40 but menopausal perimenopausal if you see a cyst and it needs active intervention from the doctor's side okay before concluding i want to emphasize on the healthy lifestyle of the females like mostly maintaining the, especially all these ovarian cysts they have got more chances of cancer when you are obese so weight reduction is very very important attending to your body to keep the bmi within the normal range by exercising walking doing yoga which is very very helpful to reduce the weight and to live stress free because most of the underlying causes of all the diseases which is mentioned in our textbook 60% are stress related 
so a stress free life and a healthy living concentrating on the diet mostly to go for you know vegetarian diet which is very very helpful to reduce weight avoid fried food lot of sugary items this all will help us to live a more healthy life so my message would be for all the uh, ladies it would be nice if a periodic checkup especially with the family history of cancer in the family periodic checkup whether symptomatic or asymptomatic go for ultrasound as female uh, um, consult a gynecologist and do an ultrasound and periodic checkup is mandatory